from the New Living Translation of the Bible. Luke chapter number five, beginning with verse number one. One day, as Jesus was preaching on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, great crowds pressed in on him to listen to the word of God. He noticed two empty boats at the water's edge, for the fishermen had left them and were washing their nets. Stepping into one of the boats, Jesus asked Simon, its owner, to push it out into the water. So he sat in the boat and taught the crowds from there. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, now go out where it is deeper and let down your nets to catch some fish. Master, Simon replied, we worked hard all last night and didn't catch a thing. But if you say so, I'll let the nets down again. And this time, their nets were so full of fish, they began to tear. A shout for help brought their partners in the other boat, and soon both boats were filled with fish and on the verge of sinking. When Simon Peter realized what had happened, he fell to his knees before Jesus and said, O oh Lord, please leave me. I'm such a sinful man, for he was awestruck by the number of fish they had caught, yes. as were the others with him. His partners, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, were also amazed. Jesus replied to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will be fishing for people. And as soon as they landed, they left everything and followed Jesus. Amen. For emphasis, I want to read verse number four. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, now go out where it is deeper and let down your nets to catch some fish. The word of the Lord is blessed. Amen. For a few moments, or today, Sister Sue, I want to encourage you from the subject, go out where it is deeper. Go out where it is deeper. Our text for today as we know, is credited to the physician Luke. Luke, my brothers and my sisters, was a companion of Paul, the apostle. And the purpose for him writing this work is to give understanding and greater understanding that the good news of and about Jesus Christ is for all people. Luke wanted, to be, wanted it to be crystal clear that the good news of and about Jesus Christ is for both the Jew and the Gentile. Tell your neighbor, this one's for you. We have confidence in the credibility of this writing of the physician Luke because it is affirmed both internally and externally. Okay. Furthermore, the good news was received as having an apostolic endorsement from Paul. Yeah. And it is a trustworthy record of the gospel preached by Paul the apostle. It is a trustworthy record of the good news 
Luke is addressing the most excellent Theophilus. The title, most excellent, leads us to believe that the Theophilus was more likely a man of wealth, a man of influence, and a man of strong social standing. And the title, Missionary Robinson Most Excellent, was simply a sign of respect when addressing the obvious. Luke's larger audience was mainly made up of Gentile Christians who were redeemed. They were walking in the faith and they had already been taught the good news of Jesus Christ. But Luke wanted to assure the Gentiles and reassure the Gentiles of the accuracy of what they had been taught. And Luke's desire was to help them understand that Israel's rejection of Jesus and the Gentiles' entrance into the kingdom of God is according to God's plan. In the text, we have Jesus at the Sea of Galilee. On this occasion, we have an enthusiastic crowd, and they were increasingly growing around Jesus. They were pushing him, my brothers and my sisters, towards the water's edge. We understand by our study of the scripture that they were captivated because Jesus was preaching the word of God. But my brothers and my sisters, let me throw this in parenthetically. Many of them were looking for a miracle. As the crowd was pressing him against the water's edge on the crowded shore, Jesus saw two boats lying at the edge of the sea. My brothers and my sisters, these were fishing boats. These were not small Rowboats. Talk, doctor. These boats were big enough, as we know from Scripture, to house both Jesus and all the disciples. This particular boat was anchored to the shore because the fishermen, the Bible says, had gotten out of them to wash their nets and mend their nets in preparation for the next night of fishing. To create a little space between himself and the crowd that was pressing against him, Jesus got into one of the boats which was owned by Simon. We understand that when Jesus does something, he always has a purpose when he moves. So the decision to enter that particular boat, which was owned by Simon, was no random decision. It was strategic. See, after stepping into the boat, Jesus asked Simon to push the boat out a little way from the land. The move, my brothers and my sisters, freed Jesus from being pressed by the crowd. Sometimes, my, brother, my brothers and my sisters, we need to be freed from the press of the crowd. Because, see, when he got away from the crowd, they were able to see him clearer. Oh. When we get away from the crowd, we are able to see Jesus clearer. And see, they could hear him better because there were better acoustics. All right. <laughs> on the wall. So as they moved out, they put down the anchor. And Jesus sat down and he began to teach. The Bible says he began to preach. 
But you know you ain't preaching if you ain't teaching. Amen. Amen. At the conclusion that we're going somewhere on today of this teaching, Jesus said, wow. now go out where it is deep. But see, Jesus had given the benediction. And see, understand, when we give the benediction, that's not when service ends. That is when service begins. Notice he didn't say stay in the shallow water. He said go out into the deep. See, in shallow water, that's where the little fish are. But Jesus wanted them to go where the big fish are. Let me throw this in parenthetically. Jesus wants Hope Missionary Baptist Church to get out of the kiddie pool. He wants us to stop swimming around with the little fish. And he wants us to launch out into the deep where the big fish are. But see here, Simon addresses Jesus as Master, which in the Greek is translated chief or commander. This is, a, this is a respectful title for someone in authority, but it is not an affirmation of his deity. Are y'all with me? Simon lets Jesus know. We have fished all night long and we haven't caught a thing. He was basically saying, if I want to put it in today's language, how in the world do you think we are going to catch some fish in the daytime when we didn't catch a thing at night? But tell your neighbor, Jesus knows where the fish are. However, Simon said, I am going to do as you say. I am going to go out where it is deeper and let down the nets. My brothers and my sisters, Jesus request took them totally of God. And you have to understand that the results that they got astonished them and amazed them even more. Because when they let down their nets at Jesus' request to their amazement, this time they were successful. Was it telling us that sometimes we let our nets down in our own street? And when we let our nets down in our own strength, we find no success. But since Jesus knows where the fish are, we have to let our nets down when Jesus tells us and where Jesus tells us to let it down. They were successful. And they caught a great amount of fish during the day when they were unsuccessful the night before. Understand my brothers and my sisters by the mere fact that Jesus knew where the fish were is merely one demonstration of his omniscience. Amen. Are y'all with me? Because they come so many fish, those nets that they were cleaning, and then those nets that they were mending began to break. And frantically, Peter and his crew signaled for their partners in ship number two to come and help. Due to the number of fish, they filled not one boat. But two boats. The boats that were once 
empty. The churches that are now empty were filled with so many fish that the boats began to sink. Now, Simon, who now saw the evidence of his omniscience and that Jesus was omnipotent, he was overwhelmed by the realization that he was face to face with the true and living God. The Bible said now, now he came to grips with what had happened and he realized that Jesus was not an acquaintance. He realized that Jesus was not a chief. And he realized that Jesus was not a commander. However, what he realized, out of reverential respect, is that he was standing in the presence of God. And Simon fell on his knees. He pleaded with Jesus to leave him because he saw himself for who he truly was. He was a sinful man. He was so astounded and amazed by the amount of fish that he and the crew caught at Jesus' command. Not only was he amazed, but James and John, the sons of Zebedee, were also filled with great amazement. And Jesus said to them, don't be afraid. From now on, you're going to be fishing for people. And as soon as they got on driving, they followed him. And the preacher said immediately. So what happens, my brothers and my sisters, when believers obey Jesus? And launch out into the deep. Sister Sue, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Number one, the believer gets a clearer understanding of who Jesus is. Understand when Simon Peter follows Jesus, he understands that Jesus is more than an acquaintance. Like I said before, he's more than a chief and he's more than a commander. He understands that Jesus is God. And Simon knows without a doubt that Jesus is essential to life. I don't care what you're going through. Jesus is essential to your life. Yes, yes. You may be on the mountaintop, oh, yeah. but Jesus is essential to your life. Oh, yeah. You may be in the valley, yes. but Jesus is essential to your life. Yes. If you're sick, if you're destitute, if you're broken, Jesus yes. is essential yes. to your life. Like Simon, my brothers and my sisters, we must be willing to launch out into the deep. And what that means is that we need to go beyond what is comfortable. We must go beyond our daily routines. And what we must go beyond mending our broken necks to do this. We must understand that Jesus is the only one who can deliver. All right. To do this, we must understand that Jesus is the only one who can guide us. Yeah. To do this, we must understand that Jesus is the only one who can protect us. Right. And Jesus is the only one who can make a way out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. Yeah. Point number one. 
When believers launch out into the deep, the believer gets a clearer understanding of who Jesus is. But not only does the believer get a clearer understanding of who Jesus is. Point number two. When the believer launches out into the deep, it gives the believer a new and clearer understanding of who they really are. When we know Christ, and when we see Christ for who he truly is, this illumination of our minds by the aid of the Holy Spirit causes us to see ourselves as we are. The scripture says, all of us have become like one who is unclean. And all of our righteous acts are like filthy rags. We will shrivel up like a leaf and like the wind our sins sweep us away. We have to begin to see ourselves for who we truly are when we are standing in the presence of a holy God. When Simon Peter realized that he was an acquaintance, when he realized he was the chief, when he realized that he wasn't just a commander, but when he realized that he was standing in the presence of God. He humbled himself and he fell on his knees and asked the Lord to go away from me. For I'm sinful. See, see, as fishers of men, my brothers and sisters, we must understand that we go out at the word of Jesus. Somebody got to write this down. As rich as the men, we go out where we are. Amen. Don't try to go back. Take off from where you are. Don't try to say goodbye to the homeboys one more time. Don't try to hang out with your girls one more night. But you got to take off from where you are. And see, understand this. Not only do we take off where we are, we take off from the depth that we are. And we move. I want you to hear this. We don't move when the pastor says no. We move, Deacon Woods, when Jesus tells us to move. As fish of the men. We may have caught nothing yesterday. Maybe nothing yesterday. And maybe nothing the day before. But in the word of Jesus, we let down our nets by faith. And we anticipate the grave. So point number one, when a believer launches out into the deep, the believer gets a clearer understanding of who Jesus is. <laughs> Point number two, when the believer launches out into the deep, it gives us as believers a new and clearer understanding of who we really are. But last, but not least, when the believer launches out into the deep, we commit ourselves to the cause of Christ. When we commit ourselves, we are acknowledging that there's more success in following Jesus Christ. (laughs) No matter what we do, it is more success in following Jesus Christ than doing what we want to do. The fishermen learned there is a greater reward in following Christ 
and obeying Christ than mending and cleaning their nets. All right. Understand? Simon's success when he obeyed Jesus humbled him. Our success in Christ will and shall humble us. Ray, I want you to understand this. I'm going to leave you alone. <laughs> the fish that they caught. Uh, Ray, they were alive. Yeah, yeah. But they were still dying. As fishes of men. Talk die. Yeah. As fishes of men. Yeah. The souls they would catch would be dead. Yeah. Uh-huh. But made alive yeah. Yeah. in Christ. Yeah. HMBC, it doesn't matter who you are. HMBC, oh, yeah. it doesn't matter what you've done. Oh, yeah. Yeah. HMBC, it doesn't matter how much you are seeking. But the good news on today is no matter what you've been through, yeah. God can and God will bring you out. You may need to see Jesus a little more clearer. But in the midst of the blur, God can and God will bring you out. You may have had an empty boat prior to today. But God can and God will bring you out at the command of Jesus. Cast your nets in a new place. God can and God will bring you out. Understand the catch will be so great it'll blow your mind. God can and God will bring you out. Jesus may be speaking and you may find yourself mending and cleaning your nets but understand God can and God will bring you out. You may not see yourself as you really are. Understand God can and God will bring you out. You may have insecurities. You may have a wounded heart. You may have been lied on. You may have been talked about. You may have been misrepresented. You may not always have been loved right. You may come from a broken home. You may have a reconstructed heart. You may be experiencing church hurt on today, but throw up your hands and pray because God can and God will bring you out. See my brothers and my sisters. We need to see Jesus for who he really is. See, that's where our success is. You may have to leave some things behind to make him first. Understand that's where our success is. You may have been present, standing on the shores to listen to Jesus teach. You must be receptive as Jesus preaches. You must move when he says move. You gotta go when he says go. Understand that's where your success is. See, the songwriter says, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the birds of my heart broke away. It was there by faith that I received my sight. And now I'm happy. Are you happy? I'm happy on the day we have some failures, but because of Jesus, in spite of our failures, now we are happy on the day this connection is coming, but because of Jesus, we've been reconnected, and now I'm happy on the day 
there was a time when I was addicted to sin, but Jesus, he took me in, and now I'm happy, are you happy, all the day, we used to be a mess, but Jesus stepped in, and now we got a message, now, we are happy, all the day, just ask the Savior to help you, to comfort, to strengthen, and to keep you being willing to aid you. He will carry you through, through the stress. He will carry you through in the midst of this comfort. He will carry you through when the storm is raging. He'll carry you through when friends forsake you. He will carry you through when life is consuming you. He will carry you through. This Jesus on silent boat. He's all knowing. This Jesus on silent boat. He's all powerful. The Bible says the government is upon his shoulders. They call him wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father. The Prince of Peace, he's a redeemer. Go out where it's deeper. He's a good teacher. Go out where it's deeper. He's a burden bearer, a heavy load lifter. He's the Lord Almighty. The Bible says, He's the Lord Most High. He's our Master. The Bible says, He's Yahweh. Lord Jehovah, he Jehovah needs him. That means he's our banner. He's the good shepherd and his sheep know his voice. He's Jehovah Rapha. That means the Lord heals. He's Jehovah Shaman. The Lord is right there. He's the Lord who sanctifies. He's the everlasting God. He's Elohim. He's jealous. He's Jehovah Jireh, that means he provides, he sustains, he maintains. He's Jehovah Shalom, that means the Lord, he's your peace. He's Jehovah Sabaoth, he's the Lord of hope. And by his stripes, my brothers and my sisters, no matter what you're going through, by his stripes, if you're hurt, by his stripes, broken by his stripes if you're destitute we are healed so what happens when a believer obeys Jesus and launches out into the deep when the believer launches out into the deep, the believer gets a clearer understanding of who Jesus is. Yes. When the believer launches out into the deep, it gives us as believers a new and clearer understanding of who we are. And last but not least, when the believer launches out into the deep, we commit ourselves to the cause of Jesus Christ. I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. And then a little light from heaven, it filled my soul. It bathed my heart in love and wrote my name above in just a little talk with Jesus makes me whole. The door of the church is open. Hymn number 298. Go out where it is deep. God bless you.